शुरू नमस्कार दिस इज प्रोफेसर वाई के गुप्ता फॉर्मर डीन एंड हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मोकोलॉजी ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस दिल्ली presently as a principal advisor thsti department of biotechnology government of india speaking to you and uh, i on behalf of thsti and my team which involved dr aditya dr aditya has uh, done his md many many years back and now working with us and so is vandana chavla he is also very efficient clinical research training manager and thsti if you remember we started this uh, series of webinar on every wednesday and on contemporary topics of clinical research particularly uh, on covid 19 and uh, the previous uh, five webinars were the first one webinar was covid-19 and clinical trials because uh, doing clinical trial has lot of challenges particularly the new clinical trial also the clinical trial which are being done and the future clinical trial which are to be done because of the so much of logistic issues the regulatory challenges compliance challenges and that we dealt in the first seminar the second seminar we also talked about the pharmacovigilance how to handle the sae ae what is how to report pharmacovigilance cases and in covid 19 situation and also because many drugs are given for the first time many drugs are given as an emer emergency use many drugs are given as a compassionate use when they have not been fully tested for safety so how to predict the possible safety uh, assessment of those drugs so that was our first second seminar and on third seminar we talked about different ethics issues in covid-19 uh, trials lot of issues because uh, how you do the consent form how you monitor the patient's safety how you do the compensation all those issues we talked about and one seminar we did on the devices particularly if you know this is the time when the lot of devices are being used particularly ppe including the mask and the 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 respirator or ventilator and the, these devices have to be of good quality so that the patient uh, is to, is in taken care of and what are the issues in that that was uh, our the last issue and i am very happy that uh, in every occasion more than 1000 or 1200 people registered and they viewed and uh, we were very happy and very encouraged to see the responses today's uh, webinar we will talk about in 40 minutes uh, on the pharmacoeconomics particularly when you talk of a covid-19 drugs new drugs are coming up where we do not have the complete idea of the cost effectiveness but before that i think it is important to know what is the pharmacoeconomics and the the title we have put it is that whether this is a, the drug therapy which you are giving is the money is the is value for your money or not it may sound slightly slightly different ki ye koi sabzi ya koi car ya koi fridge thodi khareed rahe hain ki value for money hai ki nahi but then the issue is that it is very important that you put everything into the cost and benefit analysis cost and investment analysis cost and return on investment analysis whether it is return on investment in terms of care of the patient treatment of the patient or 
the or, or any other social benefit is concerned and that is what we will talk about the pharmacoeconomic and we have been talking about that that not only that person should know pharmacologist physician should not only know about the treatment of the disease by the best of the drug available but it is important to know that how to treat the patient with the least expensive therapeutics least expensive and effective and efficacious drugs and that's why you know that the national list of essential medicine is based on this and incidentally i am co-chairing the list of national list of essential medicine and that is the basic prime of the pharmacoeconomics i will just give you this the 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 sensitization of pharmacoeconomics and we plan to have a series of pharmacoeconomics advanced pharmacoeconomics in future i i would uh, Transition. 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 No. Okay. Next. Just, uh, just a minute, yeah. So. Yes, I'm asking. We can see you, sir. Huh? Yeah. I don't know what next. Okay. After the screen. Next one. Next. Can we click next? Mm. Now, sorry for uh, for the initial problem. I would just say, what is what do you understand by pharmacoeconomics? Is broadly the evaluation of efficacy, safety, and quality of life of any healthcare intervention. Now we, here we are primarily referring to pharmacoeconomics of pharmaceutical product, and this is with a vis cost involved in that process so safety efficacy and quality of life of healthcare intervention and the cost involved in that and this is in cost involved to patients cost involved to healthcare system and also cost involved to the society because the money is ultimately going from the society as large and what it helps it helps it provide evidence of healthcare decision makers it may be the government of india it can be the state government it can be your dispensary it can be your charity hospital for optimal outcome and also for optimize healthcare resources and this is particularly more important in healthcare or say resource limited countries like india and for that matter Pharmacoeconomics is also important for any rich countries also because nobody can afford to unnecessarily waste unnecessarily waste. What are the broader perspective of pharmacoeconomics? One perspective is uh, in perspective of patients, how much he has to pay and how much he gets money, how much he gets a value of it. It is also for provider. Provider means it is a doctor or healthcare provider. What does he pay? He what does he give the quality of medicine for how much he charges? It cannot be a person who will charge unnecessarily extra. It has to be ethical. It has to be legitimate. It is important for society because it is the society who will get affected if the pharmacoeconomic principles is not followed. and unnecessarily expensive medication therapeutics are given with similar treatment outcome or maybe poor outcome payer who pays in india we are 80% of the people who pay from the pocket out of pocket expenses and therefore it is very important for all the payers to give this money now what is called as a basic pharmacoeconomic equation 
I will start with a very simple thing. Basic pharmacoeconomic equation means you do an intervention of interest and you do this intervention of interest in terms of efficacy, in terms of safety, in terms of quality of life and this you might have seen in practice. The same outcome but the two or three physicians, three physicians differ in their treatment cost. One is giving the drug which cost 100 rupees, the other is treating you at the same um, outcome, maybe with a half and maybe one with only 10% of the cost. That is uh, we call it as a pharmacoeconomics, basic of pharmacoeconomics. Now if you see, if I do the pharmacoeconomic analysis, the simplest pharmacoeconomic analysis can be the partial analysis where I have a cost of the treatment and I am giving some intervention treatment of interest and comparing this with the standard or alternate system and looking for the outcome. So what I am trying to do is I am trying to compare cost and I am to trying to compare the intervention. This is for example I am comparing two ACE inhibitors for the same outcome reduction in the blood pressure or some antimicrobial agent, anti-infection uh, or maybe proton pump inhibitor for acidity or for simple pain. I am giving differential cost for the intervention which you are giving. The same ACE inhibitor which is costing 2 rupees, the other ACE inhibitor is causing 5 rupees and third ACE inhibitor is causing 10 rupees and this is available, this differential is seen in the market. Not up to Tenfold differential has been seen in the cost of same generic drug. Now this is the important thing that is called as a partial pharmacoeconomic analysis and unfortunately many of us do not do it. Many of us means many of physicians they do not do it. Many of the patients do not understand it and they think that the higher cost version of a generic or the branded is more reliable. It is not so always. So that is what the important thing is. And if you see the full pharmacoeconomic analysis where you give the same intervention of interest versus the alternate standard care and here you compare the outcome. Outcome means Say for example, anti-tubercular drugs. Outcome is the patient is treated, becomes uh, free of uh, the, the sputum, the chest becomes clear, the symptoms goes off, there is a no relapse. If there is a malaria, how many days it takes to, to be fever free, how much time it takes to be the, uh, the the disease free or uh, the slide becomes free of uh, malaria parasites. So you ultimately take care of outcome. Now this full analysis is more time consuming because you have to wait till the outcome is there. It requires resources because you have to see the diagnosis, you have to see the in investigations, you have to see the outcome and much efforts are required for that. But this is better evidence for decision making process. Sometimes just looking at the cost of the drug does not make the complete pharmacoeconomic analysis. If I give a drug for 3 days or for 10 days and I see that the patient responds better, outcome is better, then even if the cost is higher as for the total tablets cost is higher, then still that analysis will be, would be, would be better. Why in India pharmacoeconomic evaluation is essential? I would say it is more important in India as compared to UK, US, European countries where there is a, these are not perhaps the resource limited country but even today they are adopting it. In India 1.4% GDP as compared to 3.1% in China and USA 8.3%. Modi government has committed now to increase this percent of GDP and make and to ensure that each and every part of the country 
has access to good health care. That is important. 80% of even today the out-of-pocket expenditure as compared to much lesser than 30%, 70% in China and in USA they are mainly covered by insurance and therefore we are more concerned about the pharmacoeconomics evaluation. Nearly 70% of illness are treated in private sector. Though this is gradually increasing the government sector, but the private sector again has to be sensitized to pharmacoeconomics. And 70% or nearly 70% is only health insurance coverage. But now, this has slightly, not slightly, but largely in, increased because Ayushman Bharat program where the, the huge population is entire country is covered by Ayushman Bharat. Now, what is the need of a pharmacoeconomics evaluation in India? It is important to set priorities and optimize the available resources. You have a limited bucket of money in your kitty for healthcare and you have to optimize it and you have to prioritize it so that everybody gets the best of the uh, possible care. So it is important that all national level policy making it is also important for a state government whether it is the state government is flourishing, flooding with money or it is limited money. So that you make the policy. Institutions, whether it is all India Institute of Medical Sciences or the district hospital or the primary health center, they have their formulary and the purpose of the formulary is that you optimize your resources. Don't go beyond the formulary unless there is a reason to so. Management, inventory control and inventory decision, what drug to be and many institutions have therapeutic committee so that you indent only those drugs which are approved by the therapeutic committee which will should work on pharmacoeconomic principle as well as the other therapeutic uh, efficacy and side effect concerns. At individual level, even if I am doing private practice at individual level, then depending on the socio-economic status, I am giving 100 rupees capsule to a patient with rickshaw puller. I think he will die of that drug because of starvation rather than the disease. And that's why it is very important to have the pharmacoeconomic understanding. I will just cover one important aspect. I think uh, many of you, are, but I hope that most of you must know what is NLEM abbreviation. National List of Essential Medicine. WHO makes list of essential medicine. Each country makes national list of essential medicine based on my own country's disease pattern, my own country's drug availability, my own country's drug behavior, side effect tolerability and efficacy and the cost. So if this triangle, safety, efficacy and cost if this triangle is assessed by detailed deliberation, then we give the put the end the minimum number of drugs which can be useful to largest population segment of the country. Minimum number of drugs that is available that will be useful to the largest segment of the population, not rare conditions. First list was uh, released in 1996. And then 2011, and then I chaired the list which was made in 2015. And now we are revising of what is National List of Essential Medicine 2020. And that is where the list is important. And uh, now, why? Why this is important? I'm not going because we will have one more webinar on national list of essential medicine impact on cost to the patient, cost to the country and impact on the industry. That will be my next webinar. But here I would just talk about NLEM and pharmacoeconomics 
primarily if you just see efficacy is one safety is another the cost now here the when you talk of a pharmacoeconomics cost is very important as far as the pharmacoeconomics is concerned therapeutic benefit versus financial optimization i am not saying that the therapeutic benefit should compromise and when you say therapeutic benefit means therapeutic benefit as well as the risk involved in that or the side effect profile if that is same the financial optimization is called as a pharmacoeconomics and that's what the basic philosophy basic principle of of uh, national list of essential medicines now if you just see i will just give you an example which we did in fact i am just giving you two case studies we did about 12 cases studies after the introduction of 2015 nlem humne socha ki 2015 ke baad 2000 ke baad jo nlem release hui the nlem which is released in 2015 has it made any difference in the pricing of the to the patient so what we did we took two cases one is the carcinoma breast aur dusra humne liya hypertension simple hypertension and tab dekhiye aap kya hota hai agar hum case one ko le to this is adjuvant chemotherapy for her two negative new negative localized disease aur isme her two mein do possibility hai ek humne wo cases liye रेड जो इसमें आप देख रहे हैं रिस रेड कलर दीज आर दो प्रिस्क्रिप्शन विच हैव यूज द ड्रग विच इज लिस्टेड इन नेशनल लिस्ट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मेडिसिन बट दिस इज द पेशेंट्स दिस इज द फिजिशियंस चॉइस द ऑप्शन टू आर दो प्रिस्क्रिप्शन विच हैव यूज द ड्रग विच आर नॉट लिस्टेड इन एन एल एम सी in both the a and b caf means the 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 in c is cyclophosphamide a is for adriamycin adriamycin is listed in nlem because it is listed in nlem this is a price controlled and the price is less the fluorouracil दूसरे फिजिशियन का वो प्रिस्क्रिप्शन है जिसने एफ ई सी प्रिस्क्राइब किया दैट इज साइक्लोफॉस्फोमाइड प्लस इंस्टेड ऑफ एड्रियामाइसिन गिवन एपी रूबेसिन एंड फाइव फ्लोर नाउ यू जस्ट सी इफ यू जस्ट एंड यू सी एड्रियामाइसिन द डिफरेंशियल इन इवन इफ दिस इज इवन इफ दिस इज एंडरप्राइज कंट्रोल there are two three brand will have some difference because it cannot go be beyond the mrp which is controlled whereas epirubicin is not controlled so it will have a higher level of price and the price differential between the two or three may be much wider and that's why you see here the caf was the cost is 13200 94.8. This is as per the MIMS MRP. Versus, if you use the drug which are not in NLEM, is 46,000. Now, अब आप देखिए कितना difference है. Six cycles का अगर हम treatment देखें, तो three time point five times costlier. Three point five times costlier than is CAF. and maximum difference here max when i say maximum difference is between the green and the and the last one first one bar versus the last bar that is the maximum difference is 37000 and the minimum difference between the third bar and the fourth bar is 30000 now this money is being charged from the patient unnecessarily extra with the same output with the same outcome and that is what simple logical pharmacoeconomic application will save this money to the patient 
सिमिलरली इफ यू से हम सब में से आधे लोगों को हाइपर टेंशन होगा शायद नहीं तो हो जाएगा कभी कभी मरने से पहले नाउ यू सी दिस इज द हाइपर टेंशन नाउ इफ आई सी वन इज गिविंग एम्लोडिपीन दिस इज वेरी कॉमन प्रिस्क्रिप्शन एम्लोडिपीन हाइड्रोक्लोरथाइजाइड जस्ट सी द फर्स्ट बार एंड एनालाप्रिल व्हिच इज द ड्रग्स ऑल थ्री ड्रग्स आर लिस्टेड इन नेशनल लिस्ट ऑफ एसेंशियल मेडिसिन ऑन द अदर हैंड हमने किसी फिजिशियन ने इंस्टेड ऑफ एम्लोडिपीन उसको लरकानाडिपीन दिया रेस्ट हाइड्रोक्लोरथाइजाइन एंड एनालाप्रिल सेम लरकानाडिपीन इज मोर एक्सपेंसिव देन एम्लोडिपीन द कॉस्ट ऑफ दिस ट्रीटमेंट From 472 has gone to 4574, 1.2 times more. And if this has been replaced by simple chlorthalidon, again the which is diuretic. अगर ये जब दे दिया तो 600 नौ रुपए का कॉस्ट हो गया. और अगर हमने एनालाप्रिल की जगह लिसिनोप्रिल दिया, then which is not into the national list of essential medicines, therefore the cost is slightly higher. The price has gone to 854 rupees. Now you can see 1.8 time a month. That means 800 rupee. Usko extra dene pad rahe hain maximum MXPD. This is not a standard abbreviation. This is abbreviation I made it. Maximum price difference per month is 800. Now, if I am drawing 15 or 2,000 rupees per month, 800 rupees will pinch me. But if I am drawing 8 lakh rupees a month, perhaps I can will not be bothered about it. So that is importance of knowing pharmacovigilance. No, sorry, pharmacoeconomics by physician and also awareness in the patient population. And I, I am not going to have many many more examples. But there are several such examples, and uh, uh, now the summary here is: you see the same, the so similar trend are also expected. In fact, we did analysis of twelve such segments, and we found that there is similar trend. So the take-home message is: national list of essential medicines should be. Sensitized to all people should use as far as possible drugs from that. That is important. And the caveat here is in this analysis we have not done. This is partial. This is, mind you, this is a partial. We give, we are giving caveat. We have not seen the outcome. That has to be seen again. Now we have not seen the outcome. We have not seen the outcome. That has to be seen again. And full pharmacovigilance, pharmacoeconomic analysis, including the ADR. But apparently. This is an indicator why pharmacoeconomics is important. We are one of the largest pharmacovigilance center in the world now, 250 plus, and the purpose is to collect adverse reaction. I'm not going to the detail of that. Again, that will be a, a different webinar. Now, even essential medicines are associated with adverse reaction. No drug is safe, hundred percent. And adverse reaction are the fourth leading cause of mortality globally. And in India, we do not have data, but I believe that Indians are not rugged. Indians also suffer from the same. Now, the important thing is, what is pharmacoeconomics or pharmacovigilance? That means. How many patients are being admitted because of adverse reaction, and what is the cost of treatment of them? What is the cost of hospitalization of them? And that is called as we in in U.S. particularly, people have done the data analysis, and they found the cost of adverse drug reaction treatment. Is much more than the roadside accident management. Now, very important thing. We have adverse reactions. How many people are dying? How much is the treatment happening? Is the treatment happening or not happening? If it is, then the cost will be exorbitant, and that is called as a pharmacoeconomics. Now, so what? We have a pharmacovigilance. Now, Parliament asks. You have a pharmacovigilance program of India, commonly known as PVPI. 
So what? Important thing is we must see how much cost saving it has done. How much prediction and prevention of adverse reaction has taken place because of pharmacovision. How much reduction of adverse drug reaction related hospitalization. If you convert this into the monetary objectivization, how much reduction in other indirect or intangible cost. Ek admi ko allergic reaction hua, hospital mein admit hua, and 10 of the relatives are around surrounding them. So that is called as a, as a, if you do that pharmacovigilance, you can save those adverse reactions. Versus, no, everything has to look into what is the investment done on it. Pharmacovigilance program is the cost of the program. Now, we have invested more than five, six hundred crores rupees on pharmacovigilance program of India today. Now, the, the results will reap at a later date. And that is what the intangible benefit is tremendous. Once the doctors are get aware of, the physicians get aware of, they take medicine carefully, I think that is called as the intangible benefit. I will just mention about few things. What are the different costs involved in the treatment? Think what you pay in the chemist shop, what I pay in the chemist shop is just, just a small component of the treatment. The type of cost are three primarily. The direct cost, the indirect cost, and the third one is intangible cost. And the direct cost, you know, everybody knows it, the cost of drug, the cost of administration of drug, injection lagaya to rupees ka injection ka doctor ne liya. Or if he has given drug through enema, then he will charge money. Consultation cost, because uh, you have to consult a doctor, otherwise this will be called as a self-medication disasters. A doctor may charge 500 rupees just to give you an aspirin. Or it may be 100 rupees. Standard care in the hospital. Hospital, if you go in COVID time hospital, you are you are your pocket is almost empty. Though the state government, central government are putting the regulations now. Intensive care costs so exorbitant. If you just go in five days admission, then means you are all GPF will, will be drained. Emergency department cost, hospital staff cost, ambulance transportation cost, cost of treating and adverse the reaction which you just talked about. Cost of laboratory test, so expensive today. Cost of any surgical procedure, even if you just get a drain of your abscess, it will not cost less than 1000 rupees. So these are the direct costs which you are paying from your pocket. And unless you pay from pocket, you will not get the treatment unless it is a government hospital. But there are a lot of indirect costs involved. And indirect costs are those which from the perspective of society as a whole. Loss of earning, two days earning of rickshaw puller will starve his children. Loss of productivity in farm. Cost of travel to hospital is a difficult thing sometimes. This would include not just the patient, but also their family. It is not US, this is India, where one patient is accompanied by minimum of three or four attendants, particularly if he's more sick. That is what important. The, the intangible costs are too much, cannot be many times assessed, impossible to measure in monetary terms, sometimes measured as quality of life. I am having a depression, I am having a pain and a worry and the distress that my mother, my father, my brother and me myself are suffering from this disease. What will happen to me after 10 days? What will happen to me after 5 years, 10 years? How my children will work like that? And that is called as an intangible cost. Huge. Cannot be objectively assessed. Now, having talked about that, I hope that you are getting this. Cost of treatment can be measured in the following ways. How the cost? Cost per unit. As I said, this is the 10 tablets of uh, paracetamol, cost about uh, 2 rupees. 
there is a 10 tablets of another brand of paracetamol cost around 20 rupees and you know the differential. Cost per treatment. You have an antimicrobial agent which costs about 60 rupees per day treatment versus 200 rupees per day treatment and 3 days treatment versus 5 day treatment. So you know what is the cost of a treatment by the two treatment. Cost per person. Cost per person per year, if this is like hypertension, diabetes or maybe any other chronic disease, it is important cost per person because sometimes the organization has to bear it, sometimes the society has to bear it. Cost per case prevented. If there is a case of head injury prevented, then what is the cost of case prevention versus the case treatment? If the cost of a cancer which is prevented by non-smoking or promoting the advertisement of, uh, of uh, alcohol sedation, cirrhosis, smoking, uh, lung cancer, what is the case prevented and what is the cost of that advertisement versus the cost of treatment of that? Cost life saved and what is called as a disability adjusted life here. I will just give you an example, live example quickly. HPV, human papilloma virus vaccine. Uh, this was one of the state did this wonderful exercise. And to see whether this drug, this vaccine should be into the national forum. Cervix cancer is a very important mortality cause and there is a significant investment for curative. You have once the, this cancer cervix becomes, it is very expensive to treat. Most promising intervention which has been seen after a lot of controversies is HPV vaccine. And one of the state did exercise, pharmacoeconomic exercise before making the policy decision that to whom, whether it should be done by state government or it should not be done. And see the result. The cost of vaccination for one year's cohort of pre-adolescent girl was estimated and the lifetime cost associated with the treatment of cervical cancer among the cohort was also estimated. So, one year may school vaccination ka kitna cost hai versus ek saal mein agar un mein se jitne ko cancer ho sakta hai unke treatment ki cost kya hai iska comparison kya hai. So now, the cost of treatment price is X and other cost will be Human resource for immunization, consumable syringe, vaccine, cotton, cost of vaccine storage, cost of staff training, cost of media sensitization. It's sub ko mila bhi diya jai. And then cost of treating versus cost of treating cervical cancer, cost of radiotherapy, chemotherapy. Yeh sab ko agar hum jod hai, then see the overall cost of immunization. One year cohort was found to be, they calculated 11, 13.5 crore and cost of treatment of jo usme se patient ko phir bhi cancer ho jata 5.2 crore. So, iska matlab kya hua? That means immunization cost 13.5, jo bache kuche cancer ho gaya 5.2, 14.9 crore. So, this was the total expenditure of preventive strategy. Now, preventive strategy does not mean that there will be 100% prevention, but 5.2 crores was estimated. Versus, if you just do one year cohort, then old girl, so we, agar isko hum dekhe, 5.9 and 5.2, it becomes 14.9. And if you reduce this from 13.5, it becomes 33.8. So, Basically, practically on 3.8 crore investment, you are doing immunization and you are giving a safety to the larger population. So that is what it is. Now, and which is almost 0.28% of health budget. Why I am giving you this example is not to bog down with this statistic, but when a vaccine is introduced into the public from the government of India or state government, it does this exercise that in vaccine preventable disease, our intervention which what it will cost 
and how much vaccine preventable deaths can be prevented, how much vaccine preventable diseases can be reduced which will result into tangible or direct or indirect or tangible benefit. I will just give you for the sake of argument but this is not a permanent slide, the values change very fast, is a rem remdesivir for COVID. Now you see the COVID vaccine is uh, has been considered to be effective. I am not saying very effective but has been considered to be effective here because there is a no definitive treatment available. For 10 days course is cost 40,000 rupees. In seriously ill patient this is recommended. Is early hospitalization jaldi discharge ho and what has been seen on an average 3 days early recovery. 3 days and death has been found to be 7.2% as compared to 12.7%. Less number of death, bahut jyada bhi farak nahi hai and 3, per, 3 days average. But now if you convert this into statistical significance, then you will see that pharmaco-economically Remdesivir saved a significant hospital cost because 3 days cost in India, in ICU is very high and that is why and also saving. So still this is being evaluated. I am not saying that that is the best. but important message is pharmacoeconomic evaluation of other medicines for COVID also need to be carried out. But now you will say, yeah, bina pharmacoeconomic evaluation ke drug kyo hum introduce kar rahe The answer is very simple. We have to first see whether there is a life-saving medicine is available or not. Hello, usko to do. Aad mein pharmacoeconomic evaluation hum karenge jab mein paas kai sare drugs a jayegi. That is the philosophy here. How the pharmacoeconomic useful for pharmaceutical research? I think uh, many of us, many of us are doing MD, MS, doing drug development, CDRI, IITR, triple IM, 19 laboratories of CSIR, 20 laboratories of ICMR, several institutions. This is important because making decisions of R&D of new alternative. When you develop a new alternative, you have to compare that how it compares with the previous one. The cost of research, how much is the cost of research? And then is um, and the future forecasting, how much uh, how much it is uh, the cost of failure? And most importantly for all researchers listening, early go-no-go no go decision to minimize economic loss. Jaldi decide karo kaun se parameters is drug ko aage badana hai ya is drug ko ahin rokna hai. And that is what most important thing. In fact, what happens, the academic researchers, they get married to their drug in, in which they are working. They must understand if the drug is not effective, not showing promise, divorce it, painful divorce, rather than carrying with the painful marriage. There are basically four types of pharmacoeconomic study. This we will talk sometime later in detail in the next seminar. One is the cost minimization analysis, other is cost effectiveness analysis, the cost utility analysis, cost benefit analysis, and uh, we will skip these cost uh, effective analysis, cost benefit analysis, cost utility analysis. Because everything gives a different connotation. Cost benefit analysis. So these are the important uh, presumption and there are certain important presumption of uh, pharmacoeconomics. And if we are sensitized to these things, this is a science, but each of us whether we are a pharmacologist or we are physician, we must gradually know that what is the importance of uh, pharmacoeconomics. I tried to sensitize you and uh, my colleague uh, Dr. Vandana Chawla and uh, I see um, my colleague uh, Dr. Aditya Kaushik raising their hand that they have got a couple of you questions which you are scribbling and uh, 
yeah maybe yeah and uh, is that yes is it the screen coming is the full screen uh, is uh, yeah. so yes yes dr uh, aditya you may ask the question though i could see but uh, with my glasses uh, but you can i think see better can you read the, for me the questions uh, sure sir and uh, thank you very much uh, professor gupta Uh, for a wonderful, a very informative, uh, informative and interesting talk, and for uh, highlighting the importance of uh, in, an important dimension uh, that is economics, while evaluating and comparing efficacy and safety of drugs for patients. Uh, sir, we have received uh, questions from many participants, but keeping in view the uh, uh, time, uh, we will only take a few of them. Uh, we feel that many of these questions have already been covered in your uh, presentation and your talk uh, therefore uh, we will only take uh, say four questions for you to provide us guidance sure uh, sir and i am sure that those uh, who have sent the questions and who are sending the question i can see we will respond through email if you just if you have that or those email to you so the first question uh, uh, to you sir is uh, after price control by national pharmaceutical pricing authority some drugs like vitamin c metronidazole and anti snake venom uh, were in short supply is there any reason uh, for such observations very tricky question i don't know whether i am competent to reply this question or not but i will try to reply the as per court order in after 2013 i believe it was uh, called as a scheduled drug the drugs which are under national list of essential medicine are scheduled drug and these drugs are price capped by department of uh, or nppa national pharma pricing authority which is an which is a regulatory authority under department of pharmaceuticals Uh, they fix up the price based on a specific formula, and then sometimes what happens? These prices have been fixed earlier, and there is no increase in the price. As a result, what is the cost of giving it to the to the uh, to the uh, stock by uh, uh, stockist, and then the for the first time under para nineteen. the upward revision of certain drugs i think uh, 12 or 19 drugs were done of course marginal increase but that has been for the first time and now these drugs are available so this may happen so the take home point is the price rationalization i always say that it is not the price reduction which nppa does it is the price rationalization which they attempt for uh, thank you very much sir so the sec second question is also a bit related to the question number 1 and the question is who fixes the ceiling price of drugs in india i i said that the the authority is called as a national pharma pricing authority nppa they are the sole authority to fix the price of uh, nobody can sell the drug unless this price is approved by nppa whether under schedule whether under non schedule nppa can fix the price of schedule drug nppa can fix the price under different class of non schedule drug nppa can fix the price of the drugs which have been approved under emergency condition NPPA or the government can have a compulsory licensing when your drug is extensively expensive and patented, and by applying compulsory licensing, government of India can withdraw this compulsory licensing and and allow an Indian firms to manufacture it at reasonable cost. Thank you very much.
we move to question number 3 and the question is what are the challenges in pharmacoeconomic evaluations uh, the pharmacoeconomic evaluation we have been trying for last 10 years as a uh, train people in pharmacoeconomics evaluation to our dm students to our md students and running several workshops so first reason is understanding the importance of pharmacoeconomics once you understand it then the second thing is develop the competence and capability of the people to do that and third thing if you do that and nobody looks at it useless so the third thing is approach the government of india approach policy maker approach industry approach hospitals to use this pharmaco analysis data and that is what important thing thank you sir uh, question number 4 uh, is is pharmaco economic evaluation important for academic institutes unfortunately this is not done but must must today i where i am either whether it in csir dvt icmr or any uh, any ethics committee i first see i first ask a student what is the cost of your thesis have you evaluated the cost of thesis otherwise he will just depend on his guide and ask for demanding anything which is uh, which he wishes it is important that uh, we must be sensitive to the cost which we are putting to our research is if it is responsible research funding should not be limitation but if it is a research just putting extensive money without a proper justification without proper identification of the right goal then it is a problem so go no development of protocol identifying clear objective and development of protocol is a must i say two things what so what and what next if you have no answer to these this should not be funded uh, thank you very much sir and sir since uh, we are uh, running out of time now and we have uh, only few minutes left with us uh, we would uh, request if you would like to uh, summarize a few things uh, from your side So Vandana has some question is yeah. Dr Vandana Yeah so yeah. sir uh, we will take few live questions from the participants sure. so uh, the chat box is enabled and uh, they will just post their queries so meanwhile you can add your input sir I would, uh, yeah uh, you, you uh, I think most of the questions which you have sent through the email and also I can see on the chat box is fine but one important thing is uh, I would say we were we were while making national list of essential medicine we came across several several such issues which common physician can handle say for example i drops we were just looking at the i drops and the capacity of conjunctival sac is 30 microliter the size of the drop average size of a drop is 50 microliter the size of drop will also differ with how much angle you put it how much is the nozzle but every side is 50 microliter that means if you are putting 50 microliter here 30 microliter is the capacity 20 microliter is ultimately going to be nasolacrimal duct or it will outflow waste now if you have one drop incidentally out of 20 products we have seen 13 had written one to two drop and rest have written two to three drops we wrote to companies we wrote to association not a single response that means they admit that this is extra dose but not we be conscious about it unless there is a specific reason it will increase the cost of the medication it will cross increase the cost of adverse reaction similarly we have seen that some formulations have 1 gram injection whereas the 500 mg is the required dose so what injects what a person will does it what a doctor does it opens 1 gram dose 1 gram injection one and gives 500 mg and then 500 mg goes waste antimicrobial agent in environment antimicrobial resistance problem and if he uses it again the problem of sterility so this is uh, i think uh, 
these are certain issues which uh, would require the understanding of, uh, of all of us. Yes, any, any other question? It was, it was wonderful interacting with uh, all of you and at any time if you have uh, questions please raise your hand and uh, our next webinar would be how to do pharmacoeconomic analysis and we may flag maybe about 20 such issues which your postgraduate and uh, your uh, you yourself you can write a project do those projects these projects will be of uh, importance to all of us to industry to regulator to policy makers and most importantly for improving the therapeutic practice of Indian physicians. So, thank you very much. I hope uh, you have enjoyed this pharmacoeconomics. Namaskar and goodbye. Thank you very much. Okay, so Mahindra has uh, thanks. So